So welcome to show number 20 of, of Dylan's Music Exploration, the penultimate show. And I definitely think it's, for me, an icing on the cake to top off my student radio, radio journey. I'm joined by Dylan Owen, a New York-based rapper who's been making music for whew, since 2009, well, even earlier, but his first release in 2009. Um, and he's joined here with me to talk about many things, from how he got started to talking about his new album, which was released in March, called The Holes in Our Stories. And so I got him here in a call with me. So, hey, Dylan, how are you doing? Hey, how's, how's it going, man? Thank you for having me on the show. No, it's an absolute pleasure. So uh, to start with, so we both have the, uh, the birth name of Dylan. So my parents chose the name for me because they didn't want it to be something that could be translated into Italian for my mom's family because they would start trying to call me by the Italian name. So is there any reason you know of why your parents named you Dylan? Yes, there is. I'm named after Dylan Thomas, the poet. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's um, because to follow my next, because uh, my next question is that I know that a lot of people say that I'm called Dylan after Bob Dylan. And my parents would say, if they ever say that, say you're named after the poet Dylan Thomas. Uh, I was just wondering, have you ever got That's that? That's hilarious. Have you ever got yeah, that in I, your life? I get the Bob Dylan thing a lot, actually. And I'm also, I'm very inspired by Bob Dylan. I actually love his music and his writing, and I kind of grew up listening to it. So it's funny, I almost feel like there's more of a namesake thing going on with Bob Dylan, but I think it's just in my head. I think I was really named after Dylan Thomas. My dad loves uh, loves Dylan Thomas's writing and um we had some of his poetry books around the house and stuff. So definitely named after Dylan Thomas. And my little brother's name is actually Thomas, too. So it's like, I'm Dylan. He's Thomas. Ah, uh, nice. It's just running in the family. Yeah, I've got totally. on my, um, my, my parents, are, well, my mom especially really loves Dylan Thomas. I've got uh, his collections of poems that sit on my bookshelf. Um, yeah, same. It's, it's just, um, I, I think as well, that kind of leads me nicely into the next thing is because... We are both named Dylan, and I started listening to your music from around the start of 2016 after the release of There's More to Life, after I'd actually been recommended as you, uh, recommended you um, as an artist from Spotify, because I, oh, I, used, cool. to, I used to be a, uh, an, adv an avid listener of Macklemore, um, okay. and because of that, they gave me basically a bunch of artists who they say, oh, they're, they're similar to Macklemore. Um, wow, and, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, and literally because your name was Dylan, I checked out the profile because I was like, oh, another Dylan's making music. That's pretty dope. <laughs> um, and so I like discovered you by pure accident. But again, I find that kind of magical about discovering artists who are not in the mainstream media. Um, so I was in instantly impressed at the way you wrote music but you've been making music since high school. How do you feel since then you have developed as an artist over that time? Well, thank you, by the way. I'm so glad you're like impressed by the writing and everything. And I definitely agree. There's something magical about finding like finding up and coming artists through, through random means. That's like, so it's sort of magical and it kind of makes it mean more than if you're, you know, it's being really pushed on you by like the media or something. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I've been at it for a long time. Um, I think I've developed in the sense of like being a little more focused with my writing and what I'm going for with my writing and my intentions behind it. Um, I think in high school I was a little bit more like, you know, free flowing with my ideas, which is cool. But I think now I'm like, I know what I'm trying to get across in a song and I can, uh, I can zoom in on it a little bit more. So I like to think that I've like, I've honed the craft a bit and I have like so much, uh, further to go. I, I hope that I like never stop wanting to just get better and better. And yeah, it's like, that's kind of what keeps me inspired. Do you feel like you have like a, a theme and you can better target your theme around your song, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, 
Definitely do. Um, sometimes the theme will be, sometimes it can be like a theme, like a message. Sometimes it'll just be some imagery that I really love that I really want to put in a song. Sometimes the theme will be as simple as like one line that I really want to base a whole song on. So it could be in a lot of different ways, but yeah, I do think it's like, I'm very conscious of like the overall picture when I'm going about writing it. No. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I would like to actually go back a bit to, to when you first started writing music. So how did you become interested in songwriting? Well, I used to draw a lot as a kid, like draw pictures. And, uh, and I would write little stories of, you know, made up superheroes and everything. I was like a very creative kid. I'm very introspective. And then that around like the fourth or fifth grade, that kind of turned into me just writing down song lyrics in my drawing pads. So like after writing a bunch of characters, I would just like have some lyrics in my head and no music or anything. And they, these were kind of like really, really terrible, like fifth grade lyrics, like, you know, you and me falling in love, like just like all the cliches. And I was probably regurgitating what I heard on the radio or something. And then that slowly developed into me having more of a taste for like underground music and different music styles that I loved and falling in love with certain albums that influenced me. And that was more around like middle school, like seventh or eighth grade. And then I started writing poetry. And then that very quickly turned into like writing my first official songs. Um, and then those songs I would record uh, a lot of times just like with a computer microphone, like we're doing this interview on and I would upload them to MySpace. And that, that was sort of like where this whole thing began. That's not, that's not something that you hear nowadays about MySpace. Um, yeah, but it was so, it was so big back then, you know, it was like the way to distribute your music. I think, I think because I'm, I'm a bit part of the younger generation, I don't really know the magnitude of, uh, of MySpace. It was like Instagram. You know, like the way Instagram is now, that's like what MySpace was. I I find that it's really cool that it's kind of been, I guess, a development for you to kind of, you know, just from drawing some little sketches and then just writing down just some some words to accompany it, that it's kind of progressed into into music. So do you believe that your ability to write music has surfaced through, well, through um through listening to music or being around music or uh, from your sketch pads or, or do you believe that it's something that is kind of I guess a god-given gift so it's something that's within you and this can't like exactly be learned um well I think that it definitely is more the first part like it has just developed from me hearing certain sounds and loving them and but I think the part that is just within me is the part that comes from my imagination and my my desire to do it is what I think I'm, I was born with, you know? Yeah. Um, I think the actual, like, you know, the skill, uh, the skill of it and like the ability to execute it is definitely just practice like any other skill and, you know, kind of perseverance to get an idea done and, and learning about the craft. But I think like my curiosity about it is probably something that is just deep inside of me. And I, I do feel like I've always had that imagination and curiosity for being creative and expressing myself. And I just can remember myself, you know, at, at any age, my earliest memories, I remember just having that same imagination. And it wasn't about music at the time, but just about life and everything. And I was, I'm like a very kind of dreamy type of thinker. Mm. So I think that's where that comes in. Keeping a, I guess, a, a curious, inquisitive brain very much yeah yeah i like to think so Um, yeah i i like it where they kind of um i remember at school they used to have like a sign about it was more to promote science but they're like here's curiosity and there's like a little cat looking at a a fish a goldfish in a a bowl um that's and I, i always i always kind of associate stuff like being imaginative and when it comes to anything so art science is having that kind of that that curiosity that something trivial like a goldfish in a bowl keeps your attention. Yeah, definitely. And well, I also went to uh, Catholic school as a kid, like for elementary school, and it was very, it was very strict. 
like we weren't allowed to, you know, you really like weren't allowed to do anything. It was like super, super intense. And I think some of my curiosity comes out of that because I would just, I have so many memories of like sitting in school as a kid wanting to be so curious and imaginative, but you have to just sit there in silence and like sit up completely straight and have perfect posture and perfect penmanship, you know? And I think my, my way of thinking and dreaming and thinking of song lyrics and drawing that was born probably out of that environment Mm. holding me back so much. I mean, that that's kind of crazy. Um, because I mean, I went to a, a primary school, so I guess the equivalent of elementary of uh, Church of England, uh, and it was now it was never that strict. Uh, it was more just like going to a regular school, but they they made you sing hymns at assemblies and stuff like that. Okay. Um, so I, I never enjoyed. Um, but anyway, so you released your first EP in two thousand and nine, "How to Stay Young," when you were about sixteen. Um, so I know from my experience in, in, well, UK school system that when someone at school was, uh, was releasing music, everybody in the year group would like instantly know and, and it would spread and then everybody has listened to your, to your music. Um, so how, how did, how did people receive your music, especially at the start when you were still in, in high school? when you were releasing music or like taking part in rap battles? Yeah. Well, just, uh, just cause we're on the record. I actually did have a EP before that even, um, in 2008 called the living inverse EP. Um, and that was, so that was kind of my first one. That was my sophomore year of high school. And, you know, I tried to like really embrace it and just like spread the music around the high school and, I had a release show and I invited everybody out and, you know, I would like drag all my friends out. So I just leaned into it. Um, in terms of how people felt about it, I don't really know. I actually would, I would love to know that answer. I think I just didn't care one way or another. I was like super determined to get the music out there and I was so proud of what I had created. So I don't know. I think my gut feeling would be that like they probably just didn't understand it. Like it's pretty underground alternative sounding music. And I come from a town that's just like a small town in upstate New York where I don't think many people were that into underground music. So I think they probably just didn't really have great context for like what it was. Um, like there definitely was not an underground hip hop scene in my town. So I think I don't know. Maybe they didn't understand it or maybe they thought it was cool. Mm. Like, I don't know. Hopefully they thought it was cool. I I just, I I only asked that because um, I I, I don't know if it's, I don't know, maybe it's a cultural thing or what, but it's it's just saying that in the UK, like kids would, would really make fun of you for attempting to do anything to put yourself out there. Um, Especially true. There's a guy who's actually a, a rap artist now. Uh, does grime called called Alami Still is a guy from our school, and like when he initially made yeah. a release, like everybody just absolutely, um, absolutely just like ripped them apart. Um, and it, it's just kind of like um, I think as well, even even myself, like this is not really from from people from school, but like in kind of, uh, well, they are people from school, but more in kind of like I guess uh, uh, I guess uh, people who who know me. Uh, and actually say like pay attention to I don't know what kind of stuff I do so I got like a um like re- received negative comments myself on on doing stuff like my radio show I've I've made a couple like videos which were to try and promote myself um and uh, and so I'm just wondering like have you ever received negative comments yourself on your music uh like of, and, of course, and yeah, hundred percent. How you managed to deal with them? Well, I have a lot to say about it. I mean, basically, the first thing you said, I don't think that's just a a cultural thing to the UK. I think like that is super American as well. Like, whenever somebody's doing something different, especially at the high school age, like people want to make fun of it and tear it down. That's like the easy thing to do, you know. I think that for me to deal with that in high school, rap battling was actually kind of the solution. Like, I don't know if people really 
understood the music, but they're like, oh, you're a rapper. So, you know, you should go and battle the other rappers at school. So then I would battle. And if I would win the battle, I would feel like I was earning people's respect, you know? So it was kind of like, that's sort of a like childish way to have to, to have to do it. Um, but I think that was like the only way I saw a solution back then. But I don't know, man, I deeply think like in general that you're always going to have people who hate on you for whatever you're trying to do. And it's just like, they, they can sit there and hate, but like, let's see them do something better, you know? And the people who are doing something better are never going to like go out of their way to hate on you. Like they understand what it takes and how much vulnerability it takes to put yourself out there. So yeah, I don't know. It's like, I think just probably the more my music spreads, the more hate I'm going to get, but like, that's totally fine. It's just, I think it's just part of it and you just have to block it out. So I'd say my solution is, you know, finding a way to ignore it and just focus on like your own belief that it's worth it once you get through to that other no, side. Yeah, definitely. That's, I mean, that's kind of a thing that, that, that I've learned along the way from doing this stuff is that for, for whatever reason, like people just don't like it. But I think as well, what's helped is that I kind of turned all that negativity into like a joke. Um, so that kind of then helped me to kind of like it kind of felt like I was I was laughing at them for like the stupidity um, of their comments. And I kind of felt that was for, for me a way of like kind of dealing with it. Um, so it was, that's good. That's that's a good way to do it. So as well, uh, around that time, you, you went to the, the camp for young writers uh, where you learn about songwriting from Andrew Rose. How how significant yeah. was going to the camp for you and your journey? It was super significant. Um, it was kind of my first time like getting out of my area that I grew up in in upstate New York and um, feeling like I was meeting totally new, different people. So that felt really good. Um, and. I met a girl there who later became my girlfriend and we had this serious relationship. It was a long distance. So the camp impacted me in a lot of ways, like definitely inspired me on a writing level, inspired me on a social level, you know, inspired me because this relationship then went on to become a huge thing in my life. So the camp was very impactful. Um, I think maybe if I didn't go to the camp, something else would have filled that role in my life. But I think the camp definitely did. The no, trick. definitely because I mean I know from I'm from listening to the songs like like talking about I think there's a line which was it's it's a song from Andrew Rose which you've quoted a lot. There's the song for Andrew Rose from Young Writer. There's a lot of mentioning of Annie on on your projects. So it's it's definitely something that I see as quite significant in in your story. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'm glad I'm glad you pick up on all those references and everything. So then in your last year of high school, you released Senioritis in 2010, uh, which you have the, the song Book Report, which is a well very well-received song. Um, and, and I noticed that there's a line, and I, I even guess the melody of, uh, of your, You're My Favorite Miracle, um, which has also appeared in, in many other songs. So is there a significance of that line and also that kind of melody uh, for you? Yeah, yeah, there absolutely is. So that line and that melody were the first lines, both like melody wise and lyrics wise that I ever wrote pretty much. Like I'd scribbled little things in my drawing pad before, but I had uh, my high school girlfriend's keyboard. I, I used to borrow it and bring it over to my mom's house and I would just play on it like visually. I didn't even know what notes I was playing or anything. And I just played that melody. And if you play that on the piano, you'll see how it's, how like you can come up with it without knowing piano, because it's just kind of like a stepping up the scale sort of thing. And that, that line just stuck in my head uh, with those notes. And this was like the beginning of the ninth grade of high school, maybe the end of eighth grade, even before I had, I, I hadn't like written an official song. So this is sort of, I think of it as like, that is the beginning of my music. Like that's the beginning of my music journey is that line. So I always try to bring it back to that for like, for all different reasons. 
I, I think it's something that is like, yeah, it's just something that, again, I've just, it's noticed and it's just always there. And I always can hear it's either it's you're playing it on the piano or you're playing it on the guitar. There's the the kind of the melody and it kind of it's it's nice because it's just subtly slots in in so many places. That's good. Yeah, I, I try not to force it, um, but I I use it to symbolize the beginning or end of different things on the album. So like on Holes in Our Stories, it ends the album because it's supposed to be a show how the album is going to continue that story into the next album. Um, and I, I kind of do the same thing on like senioritis. It begins it and ends it on keep your friends close. It begins it on the song bookmarks. Um, and then on there's more to life. It begins it in that song, the glory years. So it sort of like has different, you know, a few mm. different meanings, but it's supposed to symbolize just like the story picking up again, where it left no, that's, off. That's definitely really cool. Um, so Thanks. after senioritis, you you went off to the University of Cornell and stayed there for a year. Um, I know you were not there long, but what kind of experiences did you have while you were there? It was actually amazing there. I really loved it. And it was, I don't know, I met, I was sort of in this like flood of meeting strangers and having new experiences. And I remember it being a crazy time, like just meeting so many new people. And they were such, such characters, like people that I'll never really forget. And I didn't really understand college or what college was supposed to be like. And like, I just wasn't good at, you know, keeping up with everything. And I was caught between like staying up all night working on music and then doing the schoolwork that I should have been doing, which was like extremely challenging. So I, I feel like I met a lot of people a lot that I'm still friends with today. Um, and a lot of people that are involved in the music too, like Regina Zaremba, I met there at Cornell. Um, and Kia Rogers, who's like one of my best friends. I reference him on uh, Neighborhood Saints. And yeah, so it was kind of this this year filled with like socializing. And, and I was single for the first time then too for a while. So I felt kind of free to just like meet people and Felt like this surge of independence. No, I, I mean, I definitely feel that uh, what you're alluding to about socializing and meeting people, especially from as well all over the world, is what something that I've, yeah. I've really enjoyed about about university. One of the f- a few things I've enjoyed about university, also just the opportunities, just to do things that you wouldn't necessarily be able to do, like uh, elsewhere. Um, yeah. So then. Obviously, uh, in 2012, you then released Keep Your Friends Close. Um, so I'm guessing this was written while you were at Cornell, um, but did you also continue writing it, uh, and re- well, continue writing it and working on it once you had gone back home to, your, to Orange County? Well, yeah, it was, uh, so it was mostly written at Cornell, and then I finished it up. I finished it up over the next year. Um, So there were some songs that were written outside of Cornell. And I actually, after Cornell, I went to uh, NYU and I went to a music program there, like this very small music program um, called Clive Davis. And so, so I was actually living in New York City before I lived back in Orange County. And when I was living in the city, I remember finishing Lonely Mexico from the Keep Your Friends Close EP I remember finishing Landmarks and I actually went back up to Cornell and recorded Landmarks in the studio at Cornell with Regina. So it was sort of like half and half between New York and Cornell and then a little bit in Orange County. Um, But yeah, the, the project is a lot about like, it's about high school friends, also about the Cornell friends and transferring and just about that whole like transitional time in your life yeah i mean i could i could definitely feel that um there was like a a couple lines for me which were like i guess standout things which kind of like i would love to hear what those are yeah yeah so there's there's the one from bookmarks which is this is uh this this one's for anybody who woke up without a feeling or sense of home and hates being alone honestly i know how hard it can it can be to find yourself when you're lost that's like for me that is something that like I, I am as very much the sense of home bug, 
even if like I I you know don't want to live in my hometown, stay in my hometown forever. Obviously, that's where you know my family is and everything. So for me, that is like um like when when coming to university, you don't obviously feel like it's your home. So you 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 kind of feel lost. You also yeah you feel alone because you just you've left everybody behind. Um, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you relate to and that. And then also then just about like you're feeling lost like i think that kind of like personally it's been like a hard road to discovery i know this is also uh i guess you you've been trying to i guess in a way rediscover yourself um in the the further projects what it what it seems to me um and and then the the second one is from uh keep your friends close which is where you put where you say this is my first journal entry in a long time, a real enlightenment. It's been a year and a half since I didn't feel like writing. Um, because again, for, for me, that's kind of like, uh, like I've, I've been through kind of patches where like, I just haven't, the things that I have enjoyed. So I, I, I play guitar a lot. It's like the things I used to enjoy be- when I came, but before I came to university, I just didn't get the, the same pleasures out of it. And it's taken kind of a long time to to get back to where i was when it comes to something like playing yeah. guitar um definitely yeah that's that's exactly how i was feeling with those lines and i just think it's interesting how like when you feel really good and you feel inspired you just do the things you love more and the things that actually make you happy yeah. more you know and it's i think writing for me is that thing like it sounds like playing guitar for you is and probably doing the radio station and other things that you have. But yeah, it's like, I think it's good to remember when you're not feeling great that you should still do those things because they might, they might help you feel better, you know? Yeah. It was, it was just very like, it was very hard for me to like want to pick up the guitar. Um, but I would find like slowly, slowly I'll be picking it up more. Um, I definitely feel like I, I gave myself a challenge to, to to learn to learn my way by Frank Sinatra to learn a fingerstyle version on the guitar, and that kind of like I guess breathed a bit a, a new breath of life into in, in into playing. Um, right, like that one thing of inspiration. Yeah, exactly. Um, it it kind of then I guess m- moves on to I know you said that you went to do a a short course in New York afterwards. Um, but were yeah. you in between that as well, 2012 to 2015, uh, period before there's, there's more to life. Were you also in your, in your home, in your hometown in Orange County? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was. Would, would you feel that, that at that point in your life was, was there a time of, I guess, of, of fear and uncertainty? Yeah, definitely. There was definitely a time of like a lot of emotions. I think I'm I'm honestly like still trying to like process what exactly they were. Um, it was almost more of kind of numbness and sort of definitely uncertainty, but I don't know if I felt the fear so much. Like it was kind of like that was when my grandpa had cancer for this time while I was living at home. And we would go back and forth from his house where he was sick and like helping take take care of him back to my house. And we had a family member living with me who also had cancer at the same time. And so we would like take care of him as well. So it was just kind of like this crazy hectic time, but also kind of this like somber, like numb sort of time. Yeah. And I was, I had all the time in the world to make music, but I just didn't feel so inspired. It was, it was really really weird and putting out there's more to life was like my my like last attempt to kind of like get the fire back and thankfully i think it sort of worked and jump started me making all this new stuff that i've been putting out now and i'm like i just think i'm like doing so much better and so much more inspired now no definitely i mean it definitely sounds like sounds pretty rough um because i mean it's i've like personally i've also like experienced uh uh, one of like a, a very close family friend of ours who's kind of been like uh, I guess the the Italian grand uh, grandparents that I haven't quite had uh, because my uh, mum's mum died before I was born so they kind of were like in England but also Italian kind of adopted me he suffered from cancer yeah. at, I think uh, oh, I'm, 
I can't even remember. It feels so long ago now, but I think it was around like 2014, 15. Um, and it was like, yeah. you just kind of see, same, same time. you kind of see the deterioration of a person. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and all the, the toll it takes on everyone else too. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, so I, I, I kind of then want to, so in, in your letter that you, you released when you released holes in our stories, you were saying that, uh, kind of you, from, uh, there's more to life in 2015 that you, you were feeling, were you feeling like you were missing out on, on your big adventure at that point? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. I, I think I've always been, I've always been worried that I'm missing out on it. And like, even when I'm experiencing it. And then I think with around that there's more to lifetime, that was when I felt like I really am missing out on it. I just felt like stuck living in my mom's house and didn't feel like I was, you know, going towards what I wanted to and didn't feel like I was meeting new people and going out on tour and do, you know, doing the things that I think bring me happiness. And I think now I'm consciously trying to be more present and more like, you know, making the most of like right now, rather than feeling like I have to experience some adventure like later in my life, you know, when I'm more ready or when just some opportunity that, that I think is going to present itself comes along. No, definitely. I, I can, I can definitely tell that from, from, I guess, from the there's more to life to then holds our story how your i guess the your your tone has kind of changed um that's cool i i'm glad to hear that actually like no nobody has really said specifically that yet and that's that makes me happy to hear i i think that especially like there's more to life it's um for me it's one of those albums that i've come back to uh, many different points when I've had many different events going on in my life. Um, and it definitely feels like, because it, it's more of a, um, I guess a, a bit of a, an escape, a bit of a, because you're, you're kind of still trying to, I guess, reignite yourself, trying to dream of this big adventure, trying to be like, nah, come on, you know, we've got to carry on with life. Um, you know, keep, keep on, keep on moving on. Even if you feel like at this point it's hopeless things, surely stuff has to turn around at some point. Um, I mean, right. and that kind of leads me on to like my, my favorite song is this incredible life on, on there's more to life. Um, so when you That's were cool. writing this song, what kind of, uh, what kind of general feeling were you going for with the line, like going this incredible life? Was it, um, kind of regret that the world keeps going on while the character in the song seemingly, um, is kind of like in a half dead and alive state or, or do you feel it represents more like the deep connections that all humans have from the highs and the lows they've experienced making like life a, a bit of sweet experience? I think, I think it could be a mix of a lot of things. I think what I was feeling with it was almost this sense of you're like so numb to everything. You're sort of half dead, half alive. Like you described it. And that, that's how I picture the character who is myself in the song. And But then there's this moment of like acknowledgement of everything and just like being okay with everything. Like you're just feeling so bad that you feel numb. And then it's like one step past that, you're, you're like, you know what? It's just, it is what it is. It's kind of beautiful in this sort of messed up way, um, you know, that, that we all need to make the most of. And it started, that song started as a poem that I wrote. Um, and then I directly took those poem lyrics and put them in the song. And they're, they're almost identical to what was in the poem. So it, it started on this night. I was just feeling very like alone in the city. I went to this pizza place that was nearby my bar apartment and what a wonderful world was playing on the radio. And it was just like, it felt almost kind of ironic, like it was like a sad setting, but then what a wonderful world was playing. And it's just this sort of like slow motion moment that made me feel like you have to be okay with everything at a certain point. No, definitely. I mean, that literally, it kind of just seems like it. I, I, can, I can think of the lyrics and with kind of 
telling me what your experience was it has I kind of like oh yeah that makes a lot of sense it all just sort of falls in nicely if if that may, if just looking back yeah. on it um it just kind of seems like it ever so nicely falls falls all together um yeah that, so thank you that's nice shortly after well i mean you so you were in new york at the time so had when was it in between writing there's more to life where you moved to new york city it um that was around 2000 like the end of 2012 i was there and 2013 i was there and then the summers i would come back home and a little bit of 2014 i was there then after that i was upstate for a few years and now i'm back in new york now okay okay that makes that makes a lot of sense because yeah because i i like i kind of tried to piece together stuff so i kind of thought from 15 to 2012 to 2015 you were in orange county and once that was released you then plunged into to kind of like um moving to to new york well it's i think you did a great job of piecing that together because that's actually i feel like that's sort of how it takes mm. place in the music is exact is exactly how you perceived it but it's a little i think in my actual where i was living it's just a little more like chaotic than that like there was a little more like back and forth and like whatever but the like the chronology of the music is actually i think exactly the way that you see it so that's really cool no yeah um so then till from then once well you've been there for for basically a long time like dashing in and out yeah but kind of from the release of there's more to life to 2019 you've been working on writing the new album the holes in our stories which was released in march so what does the album title what does it mean for you it's supposed to be and what it means to me is just that there are parts of our lives and our pasts that don't really ever get any kind of resolution so like let's say my relationship with annie it will probably never get more conclusion than it has right now and it's sort of like in my mind was left on this unfinished cliffhanger in a way um and like my grandpa passing away like that's something that you know it doesn't really ever feel like it's like has such a nice bow wrapped up on it that it makes total sense and that i get total like clarity with it so i think it's just the idea that everybody in the world has these things in their past and you have to be able to just live with them and let them go um, or make peace with them in some way so it's like your story is not some like perfectly constructed, complete picture, like it has some holes in it. Um, and then, of course, the thesis statement in the album is just you need to be careful not to fall too deeply into those holes. No, yeah. Like, I mean, that is, it's really cool. Um, I, I, I think that es especially as well, like I find it like everything from like the title to then the, the songs, it, it, it seems like a lot of thought and effort has put been put into it to make sure it's like right i'm not just gonna name it you know like i don't know what's what's going on or something actually that's um <laughs> right but right. It, it's kind of like you've you've really spent a lot of time to think all right this is going to be title of the album this is how kind of like the i guess the, the story runs through the album because i noticed it's kind of like um i think you also put it in your in your like audio listening guide notes is that you you want to it's kind of a concept album running on the theme of a movie with like the songs being i guess snapshots as your life progresses but obviously they're like i guess you could say that the in between the songs is is like the holes between the um i guess in in like the stories itself um yeah that's that's such a cool way to to put it i definitely think that's what i was going for for sure um yeah what's up what were we gonna say no i was just I, I i was just gonna say do you feel like through making the album that you've managed to kind of like rediscover yourself and it's been like a kind of i guess a bit of a therapy session for you yeah i really do um i know that that sounds like kind of the obvious thing to say but i really do feel that way i think on there's more to life there was stuff that i was feeling that I didn't say 
Um, and then on this album, I just didn't hold back and I just talked about it all. And I think that that felt really good to do. And it like forced me to think about things. And also by putting it out there, I hear people will be like, oh, you know, I, I like went through that same thing or whatever. And that kind of like gives me a little bit of peace of mind. Um, so I do think it really, it really helped with that. Um, and I think it also just in the sense of like putting out new music and something that I am proud of and worked hard on, it just kind of like moves my life forward. Like I now, I just came back from like two shows in the Midwest here in America and like, it just feels so good to get out and do those things again. And I wouldn't be doing them if I didn't have this album out that I was proud enough to like fly out there and perform, you know? No, yeah. Uh, as well. So it's kind of like both thematically it like helped and, and like expression wise, but then also just like mm. more in a, like a life kind of sense. No, I mean, I've, I've been kind of keeping up to with, with like what's been going on and like, you know, like I see the videos that, you know, people are all out there. People seemed, well, seem pretty hype you're going with well just yourself and 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 a guitarist who also plays the trumpet which i was found like very impressive it's like you right. know a, a a mini a mini kind of uh of uh, a mini band and and you're still kind of like yeah i, I was yeah. i was very impressed at, at how how good it it looked from from just watching on oh, on Instagram you. stories, I also noticed as well you've been as well once you've been going to these places, you've been going to the basic coffee shops to to have fan meetups. How has that been been for you? That that's been amazing. I'm I'm glad you brought that up. I just did the first did it for the first time ever on Saturday, and then the second time ever on Monday. So we're like a few days fresh off the idea and. They were so cool. I didn't know what to expect. Like, I don't know if anyone's going to show up, you know, um, but it was great. There was like a good turnout at both of them. And the people were so, the people are so cool. Like I get along with them. It kind of makes sense. It's like, I'm definitely like being myself in my music. So if they love the music, we'll probably get along pretty well. But it just felt, it just like wasn't weird at all, you know? And you might think it'd be like just uncomfortable meeting strangers like that or something but it was like we hit it off right away i think everyone really liked it we like took some great pictures and yeah i don't know i want to do that everywhere now i think i think something special especially when it comes to 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 your music is well i wouldn't say it's a bad thing but as as me the listener i feel like i personally know you and personally like you've been a friend for years if that makes sense you know what i mean um but it's like <laughs> yeah. kind of like chatting to you yeah. now it feels like i'm reconnecting with an old friend which i haven't seen for years um which is probably like um that's amazing that I, I kind of feel that it 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 definitely goes like your personality who you are and kind of like your life situations shine through the music um and 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 it's kind of like then from there like you know it something that's powerful for me is that it i i get like i guess the similar feelings that are portrayed through the music or i can kind of think of a situation in my head it's like oh yeah i was feeling like that in so and so situation and it's kind of like oh yeah i, I yeah. understand i understand like why he might be going for a tough time or why he's you know feeling like he he's lost who he is um yeah and and i think that's something that is generally something with music itself uh which is which is really powerful um yeah i i completely agree i think that that's like there's this kind of common understanding i think when i meet people who love the music it's like we understand each other just on the basis of like well you know the way we probably both have see the world definitely um as well so to accompany the album oh well to accompany the album you released a book so would you be able to tell me a little bit of what is in the book yeah definitely um so the book is a short story um it's about 50 some pages long the short story part and it 
is kind of like one chapter. There's 13 chapters, which correlates with 13 songs on the album. And it's sort of like a little short vignette about each experience. Um, not identically with the tracks on the album, but um, sort of touching on those things. And it explains all the chapters connect in different ways. So it kind of explains how like my grandpa who passed away Mm -hmm. drove me to that summer camp in Virginia. And that's where I met Annie. And then, you know, I met Annie and then I flew to Colorado and it like my life kind of bloomed and I was missing her at Cornell, but that allowed me to meet new friends that are still in my life now. And it sort of weaves in and out of all the things that like we've touched on a little bit in this call and yeah so it's it's just sort of like my life story from like probably 11th grade on um on paper and i don't know it was really fun to write i would love for you to read it for sure no definitely it's it it, it seems to me it's like um like kind of as well it's that like i guess that details in between of the songs uh, and the type of experience that you'll feel at the time is is a bit exactly. similar to because um, I I picked up a copy of Watsky's book, which was a collection of essays, which where he's again talking about personal stories uh, of his life, which he which again kind of interwines between songs from his albums. Um, yeah, yeah, a few people have made that uh, reference to me, and I read a little bit of Watsky's, and I definitely agree. I think it is like. It's definitely like in that same ballpark. No, definitely. Um, so as well, from from looking on your on your web page, um, in the description it says that you shared a stage for na- uh, we shared a stage with names like Logic, with Khalifa, Mac Miller, and Watsky, uh, who was well I've mentioned before is, is as well as an artist I really like. But so did you perform as openers for these guys? Yeah, yeah. So those were openers. They were all kind of like different situations, but. They were all super, super memorable. Like I could definitely tell you about any of them. Were you? I guess. I guessing you. You met these guys. Were you ever like starstruck when you met them? Um, I think I was starstruck a little bit when I met Mac Miller when I played with him. Um, and that was 2011, I think. Um, yeah, 2011 or 12. I played with Mac Miller and. I was a little starstruck with him because he was like Mm. the hottest new artist at the time. So that was a little crazy. Um, And of course, rest in peace, Mac Miller. Um, But I don't know, a lot of them, I kind of see them as like, I feel like I probably have a pretty similar day-to-day life to these other people who I'm playing with, just in the sense of like, I'm sure we're working on the same things, just at like different scales. So I don't, I don't really get too starstruck with it. It's definitely a little like it's, there's a weird dynamic. Like it's hard to just get to know someone like that in that environment, unless you're like touring with them, but just for a one-off opening show, sometimes like you don't really get to like really get deeply connected with them. Um, But it's, it's always cool to meet them. It's kind of like you, you kind of go in, you'd like, have a little chat with them and then and then kind of like you then go do the show see them afterwards be like all right it's your turn now kind of thing exactly and when they're usually when they're the headliner you know like 90 percent of the audience is there for them so they have like a lot going on and they have a lot to think about and a lot of fans to talk to and stuff so you don't usually like get that much of an opportunity to really like get to know them no yeah um because uh, I mean, I kind of had like a, I guess a similar, well, <laughs> similar. I didn't know I was didn't open for anybody, but like we had a, a guy called Nasty C, who's a South African rapper, who is like, I mean, it's it's weird because it wasn't like I was a fan before. Um, uh, he came he came to our university to perform a show, and then I was in contact with his radio uh, promoter about doing an interview with him. So I kind of was like the behind the scene man of it, um, of like setting everything up. And I yeah. remember having to go like meet him. And beforehand I saw he had like 1.5 million followers on Instagram. I was like, oh my God, this guy's like a, 
like you know he's someone um and i was like i just was so right. i was pretty much so nervous uh as well because i was like as well like the i guess the the manager <laughs> kind of person that i was like oh my god i have to make sure this goes well i don't want to go wrong i don't want to accept nasty c i don't want to stop i don't want to upset his boys i don't you know i don't want to go thinking like oh those guys those kids at stack radio were, oh, were, were terrible um and that was like, I mean, that's a whole story yeah. for another day. Like that was like a complete, that was a crazy night. But in the end, we like got the interview. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was so good that uh, another guy from the radio station like stood in to do the interview. So I wasn't like do, trying to juggle everything around. Um, nice. That's good. But yeah, that was kind of like, I think that was somebody, I guess, who's like, I guess, famous and has a lot of like followers. Um, and, and definitely I felt, I guess I felt the being starstruck um, and I felt like the nerves of it all. Um, yeah. Yeah. That could definitely happen. But I find that those, like those nerves and being nervous about how starstruck you are, like it usually just makes it more complicated to just interact. Like these people are just, they're just normal people at the end of the day. So I think the more like yeah. you can block that stuff out, the more, the more chill your interaction will was... end up being, you know? Mm. But some sometimes it's just impossible if it's, like, somebody with millions of fans. He was, like, he was such a chill dude. Like, it was, it, it but, it like, because as well, he has, because I, so I, I have to accompany him, and then there's the radio promoter that is kind of, like, the guy I'm dealing with, and then he has all his other crew as well running around doing stuff, and it was just kind of, like, that was like the first time I experienced something like this, like proper, like, I was like, man, this is properly what it is like if you were like, I guess a promoter or a manager of a, of a, of an artist or a band. I was like, it was just like, it was, it was madness. I can like, it seemed like for me, time had slowed down and them, everything was going in like, a, like a hundred miles an hour. Um, but yeah, I, I just want to kind of, I know we've kind of like, running low on time i just want to kind of ask you kind of like one question to wrap things up so what would you say would be next for you in your in your journey i think next i in general i want to release way more music and just put myself out there more and play more shows and kind of do more i'm trying this thing where i release a video every friday at 11 a.m so i'm going to be doing that on my youtube channel at dylan owen music every week and then this summer i think i'm going to release an ep of four songs i'm hoping i can get it ready by by the end of summer so that'll be like the most i've ever released in a short time period like the album and the ep i want to be like very short and just digestible four songs um i have three of them written and one of them still i gotta write and then after that i even already have ideas for the music to come afterwards so Definitely no shortage of like ideas and inspiration. Um, and hopefully this summer too, I could plan a, a tour in way more cities than just like these four or five that I'm doing right now. No, I'm sure many, many people are just, are just dying for, for, for you to come and then to listen to the music live. Oh, thanks. Well, thank you very much for joining me. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I've really enjoyed it. Of course, yeah. You too. I've really enjoyed it as well. Thank you for having me. So for the for the listeners at home and listeners on the YouTube, if you do want to check out Dylan Owen, I will have all his all his links in the description. I mean, I would I would, if I was you listening, I would definitely check him out. Uh, <laughs> do it. Thank you. Thank you again for joining me. This has been Dylan's Music Exploration show number 20 join me hopefully in two weeks time for the the grand finale um and yeah i'm going to be ending my student radio i guess journey with a bang so thank you very much for listening everyone thanks everyone thanks everyone thanks everyone